Without a doubt, COVID-19 has been changing the world as we know it. Be it in personal lives, professional lives, or in the systems at large in the world which have been affected, the world is a different place than it was a few months ago. One of the most worrying problems that COVID-19 has brought about, in my opinion, have been the worldwide medical shortages that we've seen for respiratory support equipment. See, in the worst COVID-19 cases, patients have such difficulty breathing on their own that they're required to be put on what are known as mechanical ventilators, which are devices which assist with breathing. But the problem is that not all hospitals and not all countries have the quantity of mechanical ventilators that they anticipate needing for the number of COVID patients who may require one. And manufacturing standard ventilators takes a significant amount of time. In normal time, that takes about 12 weeks. And in pandemic conditions, they've gotten it down to about seven or eight weeks, but this doesn't seem to be enough to respond to surges like we've seen in Northern Italy. So in cases like that, what we've seen is doctors having to choose who gets ventilated and who doesn't. A decision which can mean life or death for the patient based on equipment shortages. And out of this problem, on March 19th, 2020, the Code Life Ventilator Challenge was announced. The idea was simple create an open source ventilator design, which was low cost, simple, easy to use, and easy to build, using rapid manufacturing tools like 3D printing, CNC machines, and low cost computers like Arduinos and smartphones. The challenge was open to the world, and there was a $200,000 prize for the top submission. Teams from around the world responded and got to work. My group, Breeze, started off as a group of four McGill undergraduates, but quickly grew to a group of 11 undergraduates and three mature participants, making us a group of 14 Canadians with a very diverse set of skills and backgrounds. The idea behind our device was relatively simple. We thought, well, a lot of the fragility in current designs comes from complex mechanical parts. We thought that maybe there was a way to take these complex mechanical parts and replace them with software and with valves, which are robust and easy to manufacture rapidly. And that's exactly what we did. In just a few weeks, my team designed and built a ventilator prototype with only three mechanical components, and most of its parts can be 3D printed. How our design works is pretty simple. Using smart software, we control a 3D printed turbine to push air through a series of valves at the appropriate pressure and flow. Based on the pressure coming out of the turbine, and the pressure in the patient's lungs, the passive valves open or close appropriately, pushing air into the patient during inhalation and allowing for exhalation. Though the operating principle was relatively simple, as you might imagine, the actual execution was very difficult. Our team worked around the clock to design and prototype this device as quickly as possible. We were working 100-hour weeks and enlisting outside help where possible. We interviewed ICU doctors in areas with many COVID patients to ensure that our design suited their needs and we asked respiratory technicians and engineers for help with our interface and our hardware. There were many setbacks, adventures, and many sleepless nights, but in the end, we succeeded. Our prototype, with its novel design, could deliver mechanical ventilation while using only three active mechanical parts. We're really proud of what we've done and we're excited to share our design with the world. In the end, there were submissions to the challenge from over 2,600 individuals from 90 countries all around the world. Of these submissions, nine projects were chosen as semi-finalists to be evaluated closer by judges. And we were one of these semi-finalists. As I post this video, our prototype and our design are being evaluated for their practicality and their effectiveness in this pandemic context. We won't know the results of judging just yet, but it's pretty cool to have made it this far. I'm really proud of the team and of the work that we've put in up to this point. So what next, right? Well, right now we just have a prototype. And for medical devices especially, it takes a lot to go from a prototype to a final product. We think that our design is great, but there are a lot of questions that we still need to answer and a lot of work that still needs to be done to make this safe for deployment. Once we hear back from judging, we'll have a bit of a better idea of the work that we need to do in order to move this project forward. But in the meantime, we're taking a bit of a step back from this active development and focusing in on some other questions. Questions like, where in the world are low-cost, rapidly manufacturable ventilators going to be needed the most? And how do we make our design more robust and thus safer without sacrificing this rapid manufacturability and the cost effectiveness? Regardless of the answers to these questions, the last few weeks have been a little insane for the entire team. And again, I am so proud of all of us. I'm not sure from a personal perspective if I've ever worked so hard on something which could potentially be so meaningful. 
If you're interested, I'm going to be posting an update on here in the next few weeks once we've heard back from the judges and once we have a bit of a plan for what we're going to be doing moving forward. So thanks for watching. I hope that you're staying safe out there and I'll see you again soon.